The Human Nervous System by Michael Chin The human nervous system is a complex network of nerve cells and nerve bundles spread throughout the body. Its function is to interpret, store, and respond to information received from inside and out. This nervous system is made up of billions of cells, but the most basic building blocks of the nervous system are the neurons. There are estimated to be as many as 100 billion neurons in the nervous system, and each work together transmitting and receiving electrical impulses that allow us to process information and think. A typical neuron has all the parts and organelles that any cell in the human body would have to function, except there are several specialized structures that set them apart. The main portion of the neuron is called the soma, or cell body. It contains the nucleus, which in turn contains DNA in the form of chromosomes. Neurons have a large number of extensions called dendrites. They often look like branches on a tree and extend from the cell body. It is primarily these surfaces of the dendrites that receive chemical messages from other neurons or from the environment. In the neurons, there are long extensions that project out farther than all the others, called axons. Although in some neurons, it is hard to distinguish the axon from the dendrites. Most axons are significantly longer. The purpose of the axon is to transmit an electrochemical signal to other neurons, sometimes over long distances. For example, some neurons that run from your spinal cord to your toes can be as long as 3 feet. Longer axons are usually covered with myelin sheath, which are fatty cells wrapped around the axon many times. These myelin sheaths make the axon look like a necklace with sausage-shaped beads around it. Neurons have electrochemical signals running through them, and the myelin sheath acts like a plastic insulator around electrical wiring. It keeps the current going smoothly and protects the axon from damage. These electrochemical signals are caused by stimuli outside of the neuron, affecting the voltage. The nerve cells transport electrochemical messages in the axon through the movement and change of ions, specifically sodium and potassium. If there is a great enough change of ions and voltage, a signal called an action potential will trigger and move down the axon. Inside the membrane of the axon are voltage-gated channels. These channels open and close depending on voltage changes on the membrane. When no nerve signals are being transmitted, these channels are closed. This is called resting potential. In resting potential, there are sodium ions outside of the membrane, which make it positive, and potassium ions on the inside, making it negative. If a certain stimulus comes into contact with the membrane of a neuron, it will cause voltage-gated sodium channels to open and sodium ions will rush into the cell. The cell then becomes positive on the inside and negative on the outside. This stage of action potential is called depolarization. Very quickly after depolarization, the sodium voltage-gated channels close and the potassium voltage-gated channels open, allowing potassium ions to rapidly move out. This action makes the neuron return to being positive on the outside and negative on the inside. This is called repolarization. Meanwhile, the sodium ions inside of the neuron move along the axon to different areas, causing a change in polarity of the membrane ahead of the action potential. This change of polarity causes the voltage-gated sodium ion channels along this portion of the membrane to open. Again, sodium ions rush into the cell and action potential moves further along the axon. In this way, the action potential travels down the neuron like a wave. Meanwhile, a mechanism called a sodium-potassium pump shuttles sodium ions out and potassium ions in, re-establishing the resting potential of sodium and potassium ions. This process of pumping is called re refractory period. After the neuron returns to its normal state, the cycle can start again to produce another action potential. Human neurons are rarely at rest and we are constantly bombarded with stimuli causing action potentials. There is not just one nerve that travels to, from different parts of our body to the brain, however. There are many billion nerves that interact with each other, passing on the message to the brain, just like the game telephone. At the very end of every next axon is an axon ending or synaptic knob. It is there that the electrochemical signals that have traveled the length of the axon are converted into chemical messages that travel to the next neuron. 
Between the axon ending and the dendrite of the next neuron, there is a small gap called a synapse, or a synaptic cleft. To transport the action potential across the synaptic cleft, human synaptic vessels release a chemical known as neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. These neurotransmitters exocytose out of the presynaptic membrane and move to the postsynaptic membrane receptors of the next neuron. The binding of the neurotransmitters to the receivers in the postsynaptic membrane can either increase the chance of an action potential or decrease the chance of an action potential. A neuron usually transmits several neuro nerve impulses one after another. Once the neurotransmitter has bonded to the receptors, Special enzy enzymes break it down so that it does not stay there forever. All of these billions of neurons in the nervous system are separated into different groups or jobs. The human nervous system is divided into two main parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system, or CNS, consists of the brain and spinal cord and is responsible for processing information gathered from the rest of the nerves and transmitting instructions to the body. The peripheral nervous system, or PNS, includes all other nerve pathways outside of the brain and spinal cord. In the central nervous system, the spinal cord and the brain receive sensory information and initiate motor messages. The spinal cord and the brain are both protected by bone and three protective membranes called meninges. The spaces between the meninges are filled with cebrospinal fluid, which cushions and protects the CNS. The spinal cord is a bundle of nervous tissue enclosed in a vertebral column. It extends from the base of the brain to the vertebrae just below the ribcage. The spinal cord is like the information highway of the body, back and forth between the brain and the rest of the body. It sends sensations to the brain from the body and returns motor commands to various parts of the body. The spinal cord also has a primary role in reflexes and in the autonomic nervous system. If you look at a cross section of the spinal cord or from the top, it forms a shape of a butterfly or the letter H. The butterfly shaped region is made up of gray matter formed by nerve cells. Surrounding the gray matter is white matter made up of myelin sheath neural tracts. The tracts contain sensory and motor neurons. All sensory tracts that travel to the brain are called afferent pathways, and all motor tracts traveling from the brain are called efferent pathways. In addition to transmitting information to the brain and sending commands to the body, the spinal cord is also responsible for most reflexes. A reflex is a built-in response to dangerous stimuli, allowing the body to react faster than it would be able to if the information had to be sent to the brain. If it were sent to the brain, it would have to be thought about and then travel back to the body. Snatching back your hand from a source of pain instantly is an example of a reflex. The reflex arc is a pathway of nerves through the spinal cord which allows reflexes to work. The first stage of the reflex arc is stimulation of a receptor nerve. Receptor nerves can sense heat, coolness, pressure, and overstretching of a muscle. That sensory neuron sends the impulse to the spinal cord. Depending on the reflex being stimulated, that sensory nerve connects directly with a motor nerve or goes through an intermediate nerve and then to a motor nerve. There are several types of reflexes that travel through the spinal cord. Visceral reflexes control heart muscle, glands, and organs. Somatic reflexes control involuntary movement of skeletal muscles. Reflexes are developed through repetition and involve learning complex motor patterns. Although the spinal cord con controls many motor functions and reactions, the true center of our nervous system is the brain.